Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham Presents, The Past, with me, your host, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. David and I have been talking about this podcast project for a while. I love interviewing funny people, and he loves writing about them. We're bringing you podcasts featuring the best in Austin comedy in all its shapes and formats. I'll be doing these interviews in two parts, the past and the current. Consider these bite-sized ways for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. And now the past with this week's guest, Adam Wolf. Hey. 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 <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Did anything about that intro make you cringe? Uh, you said uh, the best of. <laughs> you said Austin. Uh, you said uh, <laughs> some other things that I... Funny, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I did say funny. All things yeah. that I... <laughs> Well, welcome. Thank you for joining me for this. And let's kick off with an icebreaker. Pick one word to describe your past. My past. Complicated. Complicated. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, let's let's find out a little bit about you and where you grew up. And then we'll move into how in the world did you get to Austin? Because I know a little bit about yeah. your past. But. Well, I, uh, I was born in El Paso, Texas. My dad was in the Army stationed at Fort Bliss. And we kind of moved around. And the, the way I got into this area was I was, I joined the army myself right after high school and I got out of the army at Fort Hood and, uh, settled in this area. So I know that, uh, one of our fellow friends is also an El Pasoite. Oh yeah. Uh, Jillian. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to edit that out, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I won't do she any sound sign work. A, sign a waiver. It's not worth it. No. Um, so military guy. And the other thing that we have in common is our time in Belgium. Oh, yeah. I was stationed <laughs> there for three years in Moans. Yeah. Yep. Learned all about Belgian waffles and Belgian chocolate and uh, fricadels. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, That's those right. are awesome. Good With stuff. bonsai sauce. Yeah. yeah. Um, tell us about some of your early comedic memories. Um, well, I, I remember watching in high school... Um, well, probably eighth grade or so was when we first got cable in our house and upstairs in my room. I had a little tiny Sears color TV, and that was back when Comedy Central showed almost all stand-up. There wasn't a lot of original programming oh. or movies, and uh, I remember seeing a lot of the old-school comics like Dom Herrera or uh, um, Brian Regan or Paula Poundstone, those type of comics, and... Uh, and I also remember watching a lot of the, the, the specials back then. You didn't have, like, they didn't have those specials on TV. Mm -hmm. So you'd go to whatever video stores in your town and you'd get Gallagher special or, right. or Robin Williams <laughs> or something, you know, and you'd watch. It was an event because it wasn't on TV all the time like it is now. Right. So. Right. Um, I actually went, the first time I ever saw stand up comedy was at the comic strip in El Paso. And I don't remember the the com the comedy uh, comedian's name, but he was he played Dave Thomas. Is speaking of Dave Thomas, oh really? For the founder of Wendy's, his uh -huh. cousin. There was a series of commercials, and I got to see that guy in person. Oh wow! Uh, he was very funny. He was, you know, yeah, cool story, bro. Cool story, bro. <laughs> really, really cool. So TV and uh, your your uh, arrival into comedy was. Not traditional. No, I, don't, not at I all. mean, I guess a lot of comics could say their their arrival into comedy was not traditional. Traditional. I I want you to tell the story of how you got into comedy, and then I'm going to interject maybe because we're part of this community of of people in in the Austin area that know a lot about one radio show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I remember the moment yeah, that that yeah. that broke you into the scene. So I um. I've always used humor as a like an icebreaker or a way to deal with stress, and I've had people for a long time tell me, "Oh, you should do comedy or whatever." And but they're the kind of people that like shows like, uh, you know, according to Jim and stuff like that. So <laughs> I'm not going to listen to them. Um, Home improvement. <laughs> but they're the Dudley and Bob Morning Show with at that time without Matt. Yeah. I mean, he he was there, but it wasn't the name. <laughs> it was a good good time back then. He um they were having their twenty. It was Dale's 25th, I believe, and the show's 20th or something, something somewhere like around that, there. Yeah. And the producer and the assistant producer were doing their normal nothing, and it was <laughs> going to be a horrible show. So Dale's wife, Amanda, the lovely Amanda, who is doing better now, I guess, uh -huh. she uh, put together this big giant show. There was 
celebrities. They got the key to a key to the, to the city <laughs> um, from council member Mike Martinez at the time. They uh, and they put out the call for a roast uh-huh. and. I was pretty good at insulting people on Twitter, so I figured I would give it a try. So I wrote a whole bunch of jokes, and I contacted the other Warriors, the Dudley and Bob fans, and I had them, some of them take a look at them, and they said they were good. So I went in that morning. It was a very early morning, and I was so nervous that Mm -hmm. the studio apparently was decorated with, like, happy anniversary, and there was porno magazines everywhere, and I was so nervous. I had such tunnel vision. I didn't see any of that stuff. I did not see any of that stuff. Uh, they had me sit in the green room for, or the jock room, I guess what they call it, for a little while. Then they brought me in and, uh, I had my jokes on a piece of paper and I ner- very nervously, uh-huh. <laughs> they had to tell me several times to slow down. Uh, I told my jokes for the first time ever telling jokes in public mm-hmm. in front of dozens of listeners, I'm sure. <laughs> That's yeah. right. And, uh, at the end, Dale asked me if I wrote all those jokes myself and I said yes. And he said, Oh, you're pretty funny. You're talented. You should give stand up a try. And Matt Bearden, being Matt Bearden, kind of said something about, you know, like, yeah, we need more comics here. And uh, then I said, I, I could do your job, but for cheaper. <laughs> and he said, yeah, he probably could. Uh, and it was, it was a good time. So yeah. that was when the very first time where somebody from the industry, you know, the, the future David Letterman, that is Dale Dudley, yeah. um, said, Hey, you should do stand up. And that was the first time where it went from being something that I could, you know, think that, oh, that would be cool to do. It went to actually something that I thought, okay, well, maybe I should give that a try. Mm-hmm. Um, around that same time, like, for uh, for example, that day, Matt Bearden had a show coming up right after that, and uh, he offered me tickets because I was there, and I went to that show, and the, you know, the the, the MC or the opener, you know, mm-hmm. they're newer, and I thought, these guys are funny, but I think I can be that funny. I can at least open for somebody. So um, yeah. those com- the combination of the two, getting to see more comedy around that time, and then the guys from the show saying, hey, you should give it a shot. So that was what um, led me to, to mm-hmm. consider it. Mm-hmm. Then months later, <laughs> I actually did it. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you mentioned something about Twitter. Yes. Uh, when did you join Twitter? I joined Twitter, so the, the Warriors, what it was, this year was the fifth anniversary Yes. So it had to have been 2011. I mean, it was right. It, when I first joined Twitter, I didn't know how it worked because uh, I'm an old man, <laughs> and like I'd get I'd get excited if I like I followed a, a celebrity. I uh-huh. didn't know. I was like, oh man, I'm following. It's uh-huh. like it's like you can follow anybody you want. Um, but then really, I didn't really get into it until I started becoming friends with the people who are fans of the radio show, and then um, just it's, it was a process, a learning process of. My early posts were just, oh, the Dallas Cowboys suck. Mm-hmm. I, you know, this is what they should do kind of stuff. We're talking about news and it was boring. And then I started getting a response when I would write something funny. And then so it, it kind of just evolved learning what was funny and what was not. And, yeah. and that kind of led to the style of joke writing I have, which is more one liners. Mm-hmm. So it, it works really well to cut down your jokes to, to just the, necessary stuff yeah so yeah i wouldn't normally ask anybody oh when did you join twitter you know because <laughs> who cares but it is part of your comedy styling yes, and, yeah. and we we alluded to it but we didn't really explicitly say it you're not per se within the austin city limits i'm, I'm in the north suburbs of austin <laughs> you're in the north uh, yes, the, yes the far north far north <laughs> but still qualified for for austin comedy awards down the road T- Technically, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, My summer home is in Kyle. So (laughs) So I think from my perspective, the the Twitter is a way that a lot of people have gotten to know your comedy stylings because they can't necessarily see you perform comedy very easily. It's it's tough because I I do, especially these days, I'm doing a lot of stuff in Colleen Mm -hmm. uh, because we're trying to build a scene there. And it's really tough to ask somebody to come all the way up from Austin. Right to see just a little tiny show or whatever mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. yeah and you have um how many followers i don't know like uh three six i don't know <laughs> six thousand maybe I, that's crazy and you haven't bought a single one no no no, no. sorry i'm looking you want an exact number? i want an exact number it's important <laughs> Is my phone no. making that noise? That's probably. I have six thousand one hundred and two followers. Ah, that's amazing. Yeah. 
And, and, and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> I don't make any money. It doesn't increase the number of people that come to my shows. Yeah. It does. I did have somebody, I won't mention their name, who uh, kind of insinuated that they thought that I was more successful based on the number. Like, they thought I was a real comic because oh. I had so many uh, social media people uh, well, following me. Well, did you milk me. that? No, I, Maybe you should. I didn't need to. No. There's okay. other things that I did. So we talked about the first time you were on air as a almost comic and given the the knighting <laughs> from Dale Dudley uh, to go into comedy. What, what was... The, the one thing every comic wants yeah. is Dale Dudley's <laughs> Endorsement, <approval. laughs> yeah. Uh, how did your... What was your first comedy gig and how did that go? So the first time I actually did stand-up comedy was at Cap City. I signed up for the open mic. A okay. buddy of mine, another warrior named Chris, and I were going to do it together. And I I procrastinated a lot. It took me at least a couple of months before I actually did it. And I worked, just practiced my set over and over again. And uh, probably a couple hours before, he called and said his car got broken into and he wasn't going to be able to make it. So then I show up and um turns out it was right in the middle of Funniest Person in Austin, okay. like right around the semifinals. So these are all... <sighs> So it's all these really good comics, uh, Ramin Nazer, who later won, Maggie May, all these really oh good gosh. comics. It's my first time. I, they put you on usually either, sometimes they'll put the new people right at the beginning, but usually it's the very, very end. So I was probably second to last. So you're, and you know how I get, I, yeah. I'm a lot better than I used to be, but I used to yeah. be just so nervous that I would be just, my whole body would be shaking yeah. and I couldn't sit still. And, uh, you finally get up there and nothing prepares you for how bright the lights are. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know how to move. Like I kept the microphone yeah. in the mic stand. My hands were in my pocket. I was kind of swaying back and forth. Um, but I got some pretty good laughs. And uh, it, considering it was my first time, it, I think it was a success. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was uh, – you just can't imagine. There's no nothing to, that can prepare you for that very first time when you're in front yeah. of people and – I guess choosing Cap City might not have been the best. Maybe I should have chosen like Kick Butt or yeah. one of the less uh, high pressure venues. But I didn't know better. Right. So. And now, in the hindsight, you you kind of know the the level that you have to bring your comedy to to yes, to yeah. feel comfortable. Because even for me, even now, Cap City is. So you have your regular open mics like Kick Butt or or uh, jo- uh, Austin Java mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah. But Cap City is still. It's in between like a regular show and an, and a regular open mic, so yeah. I, I kind of still feel a little bit more pressure. Um, I don't know if if the management is ever watching the open mics. Mm-hmm. I, I assume they do sometimes because they want to see new talent, but yeah. there is that little bit of pressure there that isn't at a, a regular open mic. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Well, cool. Thank you, Adam. Oh, you're welcome. That is a wrap on Comedy Wham Presents The Past with our guest Adam Wolf. Why don't you tell us where we can find you on the social media? You can find me, at, just look for Adam Wolf in Austin on Facebook. And if you're friends with Valerie or Dave Thomas, <laughs> the host, then you'll be able to find me easy. Um, Twitter, I'm at Adam Wolf 77. On Instagram, I'm at Adam Wolf 77. Uh, on uh, Snapchat, Adam Wolf 77. <laughs> Send me some dick pics or whatever. Yeah. That's Richard Nixon. Not Richard Nixon, yes, or Dick Cheney, <laughs> Dick Clark, any of the dicks. You heard it here. <laughs> he is given consent. Listen to part two for more information about what our guest is up to today. You've been listening to Comedy Wham Presents, the past hosted by me, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. And be sure to visit ComedyWham.com. Give a follow on Twitter at ComedyWham. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny.